This is a special edition of Inside Space Flight celebrating Air Force Week 2010. In this segment, we will get a brief introduction from Colonel Lee Rosen, who is the commander of the 45th Launch Group at Patrick Air Force. The 45th Launch Group has overall responsibility for all of the launches that take place out of Cape Canaveral. Following Colonel Rosen's introduction, we will begin a tour of the Morrell Operations Center, more commonly known as the Range Operations Control Center, or the ROC. This is one of the very few times when cameras and the media have been allowed in the ROC, so I'm going to guess that most of you have never seen pictures of what it looks like from the inside. We were very privileged to be able to go on this tour. We're actually in process right now of conducting preparations and practice for the upcoming space shuttle launch. So without further ado, let us begin this segment of Inside Space Flight. Uh, we're going to get to showcase a little bit of the mission of the 45th Space Wing, which is America's premier gateway to space. We're going to show you how we do that mission, get you out to some of the launch pads, get you to our Morale Operations Center, uh, and you get to see an actual uh, integrated crew exercise that's going on for the 1 November shuttle launch right now. So uh, a fun-filled, packed day, happy to answer any questions you might have as we go along the way in the tour. And you're free to take pictures. and. Ask questions and have a great time. This is a unique opportunity that we're all going to have uh, together to not only see the space and missile uh, mission that we have out here, but also to see the 920th rescue wing and actually get to ride along uh, with them as, as they perform part of their mission as well. So, uh, really looking forward to the day. If anybody has any questions, we're happy to start out and answer those right now, and then we'll get on the bus and get going. All right, with that. <laughs> Excellent. Raise your hand. If you have any questions throughout the tour, please let me know. We'll answer them as best we can. Um, we'll start off here. Again, this is the Morrell Operations Center. Uh, if you look uh, to my right here, this is a picture of Major General Morrell. He was the first uh, 45th Space Wing commander, and they renamed this building. It used to be called the Rock, um, the Range Operations uh, Center. Uh, they renamed it the Morrell Operations Center in 2007 uh, um, in honor of uh, General Morrell, who was a pioneer as far as space lift and, and getting that mission established here. So um, you can see uh, the history on General Morrell and, and, the, and the things he, he's done for the Eastern Range. And uh, one thing I'll point out here, uh, being an officer, he, he received one of the uh, highest honors of, uh, as an honorary chief from the enlisted corps while he was here. So um, please feel free to take a look uh, and, and uh, capture any shots you'd like, and then uh, we'll move on from there. So I'll step out of your way. Guys, can you guys move out a little bit? She needs to get into the store. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, this picture here depicts the four miles of, uh, of assets, of land, of sea that, that, the, uh, that the 45th Space Wing is responsible for. In a nutshell, what the 45th Space Wing does is, is we track vehicles, launch vehicle, um, and if, uh, if it's a non-nominal flight, meaning something's not going the way it's supposed to, we also destroy those vehicles. Um, and, and we do that by a, a, an array of instrumentation. Um, We've got, uh, for instrumentations, we've got what's called optics, radar, and telemetry. Optics is the, uh, is the eyes on. We've got camera sites uh, located throughout the Cape and Patrick um, that has eyes on on the vehicle um, when, uh, before it takes off and, and after it takes off. Uh, we've got radar. It tells us where the vehicle is. Um, we've got telemetry. It tells us how the vehicle's doing uh, as far as... Uh, uh, gas and pitch and yawn, all those uh, important data uh, that we need to know where the vehicle's at. So we've got all those redundant systems throughout the eastern range uh, to let us know where the vehicle is. Now if the vehicle is non-nominal, which means it's not going according to its flight path, or again, the 45th Space Wing's main uh, mission is to protect the public, uh, we've got the capability to destroy the vehicle. Uh, and that's what we do with our command destruct. 
Um, if, when you guys leave here, you'll be driving down Phillips Parkway. If you look to your left, you'll see this site here. That's where the command destruct signal goes out of. We've got folks here in the mock on day of launch um, that, if need be, send the signal to destroy those vehicles. Um, yes? So some time ago when <clears throat> SpaceX folks were trying to launch their Falcon 9, that was part of the problem was their integration with your with that kit that, that destroyed the structure. Well, in, in order for them to even get on the pad, they've got to have what's called an FTS, a flight termination right. system. And yeah, there is some, you know, you've got to make sure that our systems can talk to their systems to destroy when need be. So um, even before they launch, even before they get on there and do some testing, we make sure that's uh, up and running and good to go. So, so if for some reason their decision to destroy didn't make it, you, you would have control. Yeah, and really, uh, our flight control officers, they have a set of criteria. Um, if, if that vehicle goes off that criteria, it's not meeting the intended uh, launch parameters, our folks have the authority and the responsibility to to, uh, to destruct that vehicle before it even. Uh, so if SpaceX doesn't want us to, it's really not their choice. If that vehicle's coming back and you know head towards Titusville, for example, we will take it out before it uh, endangers public uh, safety. Um, so yeah, that again, that's one of the uh, you know one of the main missions that we do out of this building on day of launch, and so. Uh, yeah. One more. Could you sure. define, define the eastern range? What yeah, the eastern range. Again, it's 15 million square miles. And if you look at this picture, we've got uh, assets as far north as Argentia, Newfoundland, and as far south as Ascension Island um, in the South Atlantic. Now, if you look at why do we launch out of the Cape? I, I mentioned earlier that you know we've, we've uh, lightning and thunderstorms, and, and you know not the most ideal place to launch as far as weather goes. But if you look at where the Cape is located, it's at the most eastern tip of the U.S. Um, we launch towards the water, so we don't launch over land masses. So we, we can hit a highly inclined orbit or an equatorial orbit. And when you do an equatorial orbit, you use the rotation of the Earth to get that vehicle going around. So that's why we launch out of Cape Canaveral. It's one of the uh, most eastern tips, uh, and it's close to the equator. So it gives us those two advantages. Um, it's 15, like I said, 15 million square miles that our folks. Um, uh, monitor on, on day of launch, and we, like like I said, we've got all these assets out there um, supporting on day of launch. We do have redundant systems, so if one system goes down, um, another one will be called up or it'll be called mandatory, and that system will be needed um, for launch. So, if, if, for example, if we've got command destruct mandatory, which we which we always do during <coughs> the launch. If that system's not working, then we're not launching on that day. So again, uh, Eastern Range, uh, massive. Um, and as you know, we launch out of the western range out of Vandenberg, and we, we launch there for, for specific reasons. Again, over water towards the Pacific, and we launch into that polar over um, out of Vandenberg. So very specific reasons why we launch out of the Cape and at Vandenberg. All right? We'll head on this way. We forecast. Uh, for 2008, we had seven launches. Last year, we had 21 launches. Uh, this year, uh, Currently, we have 13 with three more unscheduled to go. The next one being the uh, STS-133 on 1 November. So uh, you can see we are a very busy range. Uh, what most folks don't realize, though, is we do more than just launches out of here, obviously. Um, our, our scheduling shop, which is, falls under the one ROPS, um, annually they do about 2,100 major operations per year, and that's scheduling. So nothing happens on this range if it doesn't go through scheduling. So, uh, like right now, we're, we're, uh, we're supporting uh, Border Patrol operations uh, out of the 45th Space Wing. All those flight times have to be coordinated with our range. Um, there's, you know, before a vehicle can launch, there's tests, there's, uh, there's other things that they've got to do, other milestones that they've got to accomplish. All that's got to be scheduled with our range. So even though it looks like we do, you know, 21 and, and uh, 16 launches, there's a lot more going on on the range um, day to day that most folks don't realize. Again, our next one is 133, then we've got the NROL32 NROL uh, right behind it, followed by SpaceX um, in the month of November. So November will be busy for us, and then next year we've got uh, uh, the shuttle coming up in February. So that's what our manifest looks like for right now. And, and just a point, uh, you know, you look at seven launches versus 21. If something uh, goes down, for example, if they if they find an issue with, with the... Uh, you know, the, the Delta IV vehicle itself, that could take down the whole fleet, which, again, affects your launch schedule. So 
Um, again, last year was a very busy year for us, uh, and we did all this um, with an ORI going on and a UCI. That's our MAGCOM Air Force Space Command inspectors coming in to inspect what we do. Uh, I think we had five launches during that time they were here in, in that month, month and a half. So very busy schedule for us last year. Um, it, it actually feels like we're not getting a lot this year, especially when you spread them out. But uh, we're, we're definitely going to be busy in the coming uh, in November. So now we'll actually go into where we do our operations and uh, probably take the most.